Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, the game where you try to slay some waifus. And get mad... Mad anime... Love going on here, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> well, last episode, we got some poems. And, um... I think where we left off, we also are gonna write some poems. There's not much to talk about, like, in this game. As per the, uh, last time on Doki Doki Literature Club. Alright, so we gotta write another poem here. And we are trying to impress Yuri, but I also don't want Natsuki to hate me. I want her to be a friend. And I don't want to slay Siori, because I'm pretty sure she friendzoned me. So we're just gonna, we're gonna chill. And try to go after... We're trying to get Yuri to like us, but we're also trying to not make Natsuki hate us. How about that? I can't even pronounce that, so it's gotta be Yuri, right? Hey! I think we made a poem that everybody's gonna like. Yuri's gonna love it. Nasuki won't hate me because of it again. Cause that hurt my feelings a lot. When she said she, she hated my poem. Hurt me a lot. Another day passes, it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Brian! Yo, sorry. That was Peter, and that was Joe Swanson. My apologies. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> Just not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always a simple thing with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? That's, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Siori? Eh. Uh, what? Why is that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. Uh. Siori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns upside down and lets the contents spill on the desk. While only two small coins fall out. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Siori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. Was it like a detective? Simple. If you had enough money for the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to club room. So either you're not hungry or want an excuse to take a walk. Or you plan to conveniently forget all you spent all your money and that you would lend me some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves me with only one option. It's like Phoenix Wright. Objection! Wah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. My guy's an asshole. I don't like Ryan. Ryan's a dick. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't know she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Ah! I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Ryan to let me borrow some money. That's... Yuri, I swear to God, if you say give her some money, you're no longer my waifu. I'm gonna go after somebody else. I'm gonna just solely focus on Monica from now on. Don't get me involved like that, Siari. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Fuck yeah! There we go. And frankly, after playing mischievous little stunt like that, you're suffering as far enough retribution. Eh? Did I just... Th I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. You... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's the fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Siari. I guess the little devil inside all of us isn't there. Eh. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Siori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she's bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Siori. Uh, <laughs> Pwap! 
What the fuck? Did somebody just like slap her or did they give her a good spanking? You know what I'm saying? Hoo I don't know where something smacks Yuri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was. Eh? A uh, cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sierra glances around. I is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution? Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It's totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Nanansuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! Oof! <coughs> Siori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot just over one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah! Yours looks really good too, Natsuki! Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers! But yours is chocolate. Yeah? Why well, do I think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you share this one with me. <laughs> Ooh, whoa. These two get together quite a bit. Perhaps? Nah! Steori gets out of her seat and goes behind Atsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Hold on. Ah, jeez! I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, and Asuki reaches up to nudge Siori off of her. Um. Siori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Asuki's cookie. H hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Siori trots off way to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Siori? Eh? Nasuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Where is she? Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Eh, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Ooh, damn. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But b b boyfriend what on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah! Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't there where you play music as well, Monica. Ah! I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Is she trying to impress me with piano? Because, girl, if you can make two notes sound good on a piano, that's better than the fuck I can do. So, hey. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ryan. She wants my dick. It's official. Monica wants my dick. Monica smiles. She wants the... Poo! Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love to Sarah once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, did I miss anything, did I? Oh, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I chose to leave out Siori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone's already settled down. Siori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki dis disappeared into the closet. Oh, shit, what? 
Hey, Yuri. Eh! Uh, I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was kind of waiting for you. Uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch her retrieve a small water pitcher from the shelf. Kind of with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a sec? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk and then we'll get some water. She walks past me and sells the kettle on the teacher's desk. I still be watching her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking and mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, uh, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Huh? Where are you two off to? Uh, we're just, Yuri was gonna make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. Kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want me to tell you there's something wrong with helping involve Ryan in club activities? Uh... Hmm? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Ryan. Uh... Yuri quickly exits the room, and then I follow. These two bridges are fighting over me! I... Sounds good. Oh, no mind at all. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? What did you say? I, I, I history. Monica, please mind your own business fronts, or do you want me to tell me, or do you, or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve Ryan in club activities? Ah, there we go. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just. Something about the way she said that made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. It, I, th I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Ryan? How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions. We can't always hide them anyway. Or can't always hide them away. But you've always amplified things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Eh. Uh, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me if for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Ryan? I really like... Being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we turn the classroom. Ryan, do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri says temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Hew hew. In that case, you'll only be more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was laying a show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try to express myself a little bit more. It turns out not very hard for me to do. When you're the one who's around anyway. Ah! That's great, Yuri. Ah, oh, I should've just hit the mic, sorry. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Ryan. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can help keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. 
Ryan, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read my back against the wall rather than being bending over my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's mostly because of my, uh, my, 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 your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. She wanted to say it's because of her boobs. Wow. So that's why I should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I'll retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies I keep hidden from Siori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. You and I sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Your other side's closer until our shoulders are touching. Ooh, she! How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand, that's not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus, because now I need to make sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense ringing expression. I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book and finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Yeah, sure. Well... If I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll, I'll hold the book, okay? You sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so close that... Oh, she holds it so that I don't have any heart of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But then it means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me and she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Ryan? So sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really this kind of context, but... Yeah! That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop it or anything. I see. The situation's gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell by her expression she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. I'm nervous to take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How'd you even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling in the rhythm of her breasts. I raise my arm. Uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath in my fingers. Okay, everyone! Same with Monica, you fucking dick tease. Damn. Ooh -ah! ah! Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Right? You can help put away Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. I'll... I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up with a... We hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I got the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who should I share my poem to first? I think we'll just do the same orders last time. Yuri, Monica, Yuri, Natsuki. So, Yuri first! Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Ryan, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How'd you even pick up on this so quickly? 
Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really want to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think things before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, I just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share your poems you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, fuck. Holy shit. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a quality snack. My attention was caught by a scaling raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed the strange tendencies of this ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread and set my subconscious well aware of my consequences. Well aware that the raccoon's fed always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. My bread, the hungry curiosity of the raccoon. Uh, 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 I can't read that. The moon. It commits a phase that reflects as much more light than my cutting knife, a very same light that glistens in the eyes of the raccoon front. Slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, perhaps as merely projecting its motions a newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more frequently, and so the bread always becomes handy. Every time I banish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me an excitement, a rush of blood, a classic f uh, prevailing condition. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. A lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotion through them. Yeah, I take it at face value that I can even figure out what it is supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something about different people can relate in their own way. I wanted to express the way I feel and indulge in more unusual hobbies. Your sort of things use to force the key to myself. So I do sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Ryan? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. I vigorously masturbate to Torbjorn fan art. I gotta keep that to myself, though. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities, even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're such a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, there's really ain't more people like you, Ryan. That's exaggerating a little bit. That's just how I feel. Never thought I'd feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. Just a really nice feeling. And you're to thank for that. It's nothing, really. Yuri smiles sin sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Monica, baby! Hoo -hoo. Hi again, Ryan. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that! As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. This one's good. I feel like it, I feel like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but maybe finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Mmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get so much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers. I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that. 
You must be pretty into her. Eh! You, you completely misunderstood. Ahem, <laughs> calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica, you were trying to separate me and Yuri so you can get on this dick? You could both get it. Come on now. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just the hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying... But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me! The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and endless. Cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing on a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on pizza crust, and the endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? Save me. Load me. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? <laughs> I guess just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of feeling. <sighs> or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, there's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might happen. Wait, is this even a tip about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Save my game? It's kind of weird to say. You know, let's go Nasuki. Sierra is my good pal, so she won't be mad if I do her last. What's poppin', Nasuki? Hmm. Like I admit, it's, it's better than your last one. It's nice to see that you're playing in some effort. That's good. Come think of it, kinda reminds me of Siori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But, you never really struck me as her type. Siori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... Er, fluffy... Spends so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around dead weight. Oh, that's a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If you weren't for me, she would probably just fly away without letting go of a balloon. So you could just say, do we take care of each other in our own way? Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Inky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has such a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. Not bad, right? Oh, I actually, I actually fucking clicked. Um, you can't see it? Rats. Uh, my bad. It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I'll have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And if it helps you people realize how stupid they're being... Like anyone would agree with the subject, this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid to people find out, make fun of you, or think less of you. But that just makes people... That just makes people stupid. Who cares about something like that? As long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy, 
I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about unusual hab hobbies of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said there's something similar to you. That people shouldn't make f each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You... It's not like I would judge her or anything. Asuki has trouble finding words. I guess I should try to not to be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who make fun of me for feeling insecure. And Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I'll do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But, I want to make people feel different. I want to- Ha! Ah. <laughs> Going for a half hour straight just talking is really hard on me. But, I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow. Two, so look forward to it. Siari! Yay! Friend, friend, friend. Ooh! I like this one, Ryan. It has some nice feelings in it. Uh, I'm glad. Does it mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> That's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. I gotta make sure everything's still recording. I don't want to lose this episode like I did last time. Then again, I guess I'm gonna convey feel is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in your first place. Yeah! Me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try to give it some thought? Uh, you want me to write some- you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Uh, yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to start thinking about yourself for once in a while. If you don't, it might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't know really what you mean. But I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes I like a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Siori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes you have a little rain cloud in your head. A sad poem can help you get that rain cloud a little hug. And make it a nice happy rainbow. Siori, that's unexpectedly poetic. It, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Ryan. I should go write that down, then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like a lid in the cookie jar. Secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put my bottle and keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf for all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottle all in a row. My collections make a lot of me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight makes me ain't ain amends. Ah, sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering secrets hidden in the notes and crannies. Dinging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off the bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all alone, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out for every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters a, t a little between my feet. It shatters the tile beneath my feet. There we go. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I can do is hear echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's actually a good poem! Holy crap! Yeah, that's my thoughts, too. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. 
Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm just used to being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, and you should be proud of it. Aw, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like it was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten put up. Yeah! Writing is the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sirius always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it in more than a week. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone! We're all done reading trust poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could just sit in the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves without getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We don't need so much more than a few decorations. Sierra's been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets so we can just give, give out during the events. Okay, that's great and all, but it doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. Thought you heard about it already. We're gonna be performing! What? Performing? Me too. Pah! Um, Monica? Yeah, we're gonna have a live poetry performance. Each of us is gonna choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Hmm. Sierra's putting all on posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well I did. Do you really think that's a bad of an idea? Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Natsuki. I could never in, in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, sorry. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nisuki and Yuri never shared their poems until with anyone until a couple days ago? A lot of asked for them to recite their poems out loud in front of a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. Hmm. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start an event, and each put on a good performance, then we will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Hmm. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons we were all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find some feelings they brought here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. If it takes them to stand in front of a room of two minutes and recite a poem, then I know you can do it. <clears throat> Nasuke and Yuri remain silent. Story looks worried. I guess it leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siori and Monica have been really trying hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have much of an argument left. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to do it and get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Mm. Yuri dejectedly glances at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I really don't have a choice. Ha ha ha! That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to, the, to our main event. On each of you choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice writing them in front of each other. No, 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 no way. Monica, that's, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how can you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off, have, I'll start off to help everyone feel more comfortable. Can I go next? Uh -huh, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through the notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. 
The title of this poem is The Way of the Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply motion behind each line that she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, reci the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes her breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. All ready to go next, Yuri? Uh, I'll go next. <laughs> Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables and a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns and structure and she eh, enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse in the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finishes. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her if she seems bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards. We'll give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not like we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were just caught off guard that she must have. we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Mm. Looks like Yuri's down for the count. Okay, guess I'm next then. Siri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, ah, ah, sorry I giggled. Hehe, <laughs> Siori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How'd you guys do it so easily? Ah, I'm trying to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself, like from a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see, I see. Okay then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice has made it is made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheerful like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were re to read this poem on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come out of Siori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. Maybe. It's like I got to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew more through and through. Siori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Siori. Eh, <laughs> even Ryan liked it. I'm gonna make sure to save this. It's a 40 minute episode. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Siori. The atmosphere of the poem really fits you nicely. But it might, might be that the other poems won't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours that so, so gen delivery won't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just some embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time for a festival, you know. Okay, now who's next? Asuki? <sighs> Don't make me go before Brian. It's not like I can compare with you guys anyway. Might as well let Ryan lower her own standards a little bit before so I have to do it. Not Suki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well go to get it over with. Well, it's not got much of a selection of what to read. Now I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as everyone else. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it so much. I think less of it. I think it's less about your abilities, more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something we c that'll improve our time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. I just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets up off her seat, makes her way to the podium. The poem is called. It's called. Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts saying the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. 
It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel as if they bounce up and down, as forgiving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least be prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put whatever face I want. I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, I just I'm embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is. So, well, I guess in that case, you won't have much trouble to worry about for the festival. Oh, that said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what's li what's like now. Make sure you pick up home and get enough practice for the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time which you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting all this effort for the club. Makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for the day. Now the festival's coming up, so let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, and I'd like to continue that. As far as for the festival, we'll be finished playing tomorrow, and we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Siori? Yep. Look at you two. Always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to slip onto that? That's okay, right? You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's let's go already. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori's a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, oh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like... How we get- I like how we get to- I- I mean... Story fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well... Uh... I get to walk home with Yuri every day. I'd walk home with Yuri. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why well, is the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is for her to socialize, I feel awful turning her down, so... Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That's nothing to do with what I just said. Uh, you admitted it! Jeez. Not even point speculating on something that's never gonna happen. Well, maybe. But I just... I just like to think about it. It's not that long, you won't need to me anymore, you know? Need you? Sorry, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone's different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm? Oh, that's nice of me. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. It's kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her, but for something that makes her happy, I'll hate to take it away from her. So there's no point speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Whew. Alrighty, I think I'm, I'm definitely ending the episode there. Only 52 minutes long. <clears throat> so, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. If you did, make sure to leave a like, as always, and subscribe if you're new. Uh, story's heating up. Passions are flaring. Stuff's happening, you know. I'm liking this game. I'm probably going to finish it. I don't know if it's, if it's going to be on the channel or on my own. Just depends how well the series does, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. And the poems are getting a little more weird. Something's developing. So, yes. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And, uh, this... For this question... How about, let's say, uh, would you walk home with Siori or... Yuri? Yeah, that's my question for today. Who would you walk home with? Why not? Yeah, alright. See you guys next episode. <laughs>